I did listen to the interview with Julian again. Yeah. And you were a discus champion. No. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that was a long time ago, yeah. <laughs> was it a national discus champion or something? I got third, but I'll You're... take national champion, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's on yeah. YouTube that you are anyway, so... <laughs> yeah, no, I won't complain of that, but, yeah. <laughs> Well, listening back to the interview with Julian, it sounds like he's he talks about you guys in the band a lot more than most lead singers do. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah, he is good like that. Like he's all about Greensleeve being like a unit, you know, like our strength is our live show, like all three of us working as one. And we try and keep that same attitude with everything that we do, really. Like, he's he's definitely not one of these guys who's going to set up, like, an ego ramp at a gig and take all the credit and that. So, yeah, it's, it makes it easier for us to work with, that's for sure. Green Thief are going to do a live over-the-internet concert from the Rumpus Room, is that right? Basically, we've, we've kind of already pre-recorded it, so it'll just be like a YouTube thing. So it's not, like, live, so to speak on the internet but yeah we just played five or six songs that we're going to put together as a video I don't know just for a bit of fun I guess yeah so probably looking at putting it out on the internet in like December I'd say all right is that the two that you've recently put up Gypsy and the the Golden Lamp that one are they part of it yeah, they'll be part of it. So there's probably three or four more songs. I think the idea was, because it was Julian's idea, he basically the three singles that we've sort of released this year, we wanted to just do a live, fun kind of live recording of, just to you know put out there. And I guess we couldn't help ourselves and we did a couple of other tracks as well. <laughs> All right, Epidemic's going to be part of it. Yeah, the, yep, that'll be there. And the other two singles, Mr. Number One and Messiah, they'll be there as well. Cool. Yeah. It, that's your home studio, isn't it? Professional yeah, home studio. Oh, I get. It's by no means professional. It's just basically a rumpus room out the back, and it's been built inside a shed. Really, it's kind of semi soundproofed, and uh, I've got a bit of stuff in there to record and that. So it looks like a pretty neat setup, and you've got quite a collection of guitars on the wall. Yeah, I've, um, eBay's kind of served me well over the years when the dollar's up there against you know, what you buy from America, so I've <laughs> kind of collected a few over the years, yeah. What's your favourite Green Thief song? I would have to say Gypsy or Rainbow. Gypsy's um, one of the new ones. Yeah, it is. Rainbow's a new one too, which will be on the album. But those two I'd have to put neck and neck up at the top of the list for sure. Something about those two is just... Oh, actually, the first time I ever went for an audition with Jules at the time, I didn't know the guy from a bar open. You know, I sat down at the kit and I was just kind of thinking, oh, shit, you know, what are we going to what are we gonna play? You know, he didn't really tell me to learn any of the songs or anything. And he just said, oh, no, it's cool, we'll just, we'll just jam. And he just started playing Rainbow and kicked into the groove. And basically, 10 seconds in, I was like, yeah, I really want to be in this band. So I think Rainbow has probably got a soft spot for me. Yeah. That was a few years ago then, was it? Yeah, it was. It was probably three, four years ago. And it hasn't been released yet? Yeah, I've kind of always pushed for it, I guess, because it's my favourite Green Thief song. But when it comes out on the album, hopefully people you know, get into it and see what happens from there. I'm looking forward to hearing that one because I like Gypsy. Yeah, it's in a similar kind of vein to Gypsy as well, that kind of psychedelic kind of sound. And you can be found at Green Thief Band on YouTube. Yeah, that's the one. And you yourself have completed a diploma of music. Yeah. How many instruments do you play? Oh, I don't know. I, I sort of started playing drums and guitar around the same time. Mm. So I guess they're my two main instruments that I play. But, you know, I'd try and have a go at piano or whatever. I don't know, just a bit of fun. So mainly drums and guitar, though. Yeah. And what's a Thorley CBG? Oh, yeah, the cigar box guitars. Basically, I bought one years ago like from, from the markets and because I'm right into like Delta Blues and that kind of thing, which is what you play with one of them things. And I kind of thought, well, I had a look at it and I thought, well, I might try, you know, making my own one. And so it took me a couple to make one that was up to scratch. And then <laughs> I just, yeah, just started making them and got a friend who helps me out. And yeah, we try and sell a few here and there and give them away to friends. And 
yeah, they're all different from the last one, which is good. So it's good fun, good little hobby, I suppose. You could actually be a guitarist in a band. Oh, I'm not sure about that. I don't know how I'd go sort of getting up at the front of the stage in front of people. I'd, yeah, I'd struggle, I reckon. <laughs> it's kind of easier being sort of back in the shadows behind the drums. I don't know. I've never really thought about it, to be honest, either. So, yeah, it's not as easy as the drum kit to sort of hide behind us, for sure. <laughs> because quite often, don't you actually have your drum kit at the front of the stage? When we went on tour with the Butterfly Effect, because they had all their gear set up on, on stage already, like every night, we had to kind of set up in front of them, so we had no choice really but to you know, be at the front, but we actually secretly wanted to start doing it anyway, and we tried to carry it on since then. But you didn't I, do it when I saw you. No, I guess sometimes it, it depends on the, the setup and the sound and the sound guy and all that kind of thing. We're not too fussy about it, like if someone sort of turns their nose up about it, then we don't do it. The funny thing is that you say you hide behind your drum kit, but it's totally see-through. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's kind of uh, ironic, that. But You don't yeah. understand the concept of hiding very well. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, just, I guess I, I'm not hiding. I just feel more comfortable playing drums, I guess, than guitar. You are a huge Led Zeppelin fan, aren't you? Oh, you could say that, I suppose. I was going to ask who, as a drummer, is your biggest influence? Well, yeah, John Bonham, obviously, like from Led Zeppelin. That was basically what, what made me start playing drums was John Bonham. It's kind of like when you talk to, you know, nine out of ten drummers, his name sort of seems to pop up. He's kind of like up there at the top of the family tree when it comes to like rock drummers today. It's kind of become a cliche to say John Bonham's your biggest influence, but like I can't really go past him, you know. So, yeah, I'd say he's my number one for sure. And on your Facebook or Green Thieves Facebook, you've got a photo of you playing the drums up on a high rocky ledge. Where's that at? (laughs) That's actually at Mount Wellington in Tasmania. (laughs) You had fun in Tasmania, didn't you? Because you played in a park too. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what happens. And, you know, our sound guy is one of those dudes where you can't miss any opportunity, you know, tick another box. So we're... Just driving down the main road in Hobart, I think it was, looking looking for the venue to play at that night and he spotted this big open park that he thought would look cool if we set the drum kit up in. So we ended up doing that and then the next day we drove up the top of the mountain and it was, I think it was minus one degree and it was snowing and we set up there as well. <laughs> and you still took your shirt off? Oh, I had to. That was part of the deal. So you know, <laughs> the box wouldn't have been ticked if I didn't. So I had no choice. So how did you get it up there? Oh, well, we drove, you can drive up to the top of the mountain and then we just lugged it kind of like a couple of hundred metres down onto the sort of the cliff face. That was a bit of a mission, but we had four of us there, so we got there in the end. <laughs> so is there any other boxes to be ticked for weird places to take your drum kit? Oh, I'm sure there will be. Next time we're out touring somewhere new, I'm sure something will pop up that looks cool and... Someone will have a bright idea to go set up there and I won't have a choice. (laughs) I guess that's how we kill time when we're on tour. Yeah. Yeah, it's good fun. Julian mentioned that he wanted a really big drum sound. Well, he was a drummer himself. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was. A, he still is a really great drummer. So it makes it makes it easy to sort of work out drum parts if I can't come up with anything. You know, he's right there with with a good idea kind of thing. So it makes it easier. He mentioned you play an acrylic kit to get that big sound. What's the difference? Well, basically, like for a start, the sizes are slightly bigger than. You know, the average kit, like it's a 26-inch bass drum. And I think the whole acrylic thing, I guess the sound, like with the timber kit, it kind of soaks it up and you get like a warm kind of sound. But with the acrylic, the sound just wants to sort of bounce off it and it's just really, really loud, like a lot of attack. But we love the sound of it. Like people always comment on how good it looks. Like it's obviously see-through, but, you know, we honestly got the kit for the sound, like first and foremost. You were the second band I'd seen this year that made a lot of noise. You don't need a lot of people on stage. Yeah, well, that's, again, like the biggest thing with Green Thief we aim for is our live show, and especially only being a three-piece, we try and make every part count, and obviously big drums is an important part, but, you know, big bass and guitar tones as well. You know, once we've got a song sort of down, we always sit down and work out what we can do to make it sound fatter and I guess 
a lot of the time, you know, less is more. And, yeah, that's what we aim for. When I say a lot of noise, too, I don't just mean loud. I mean it's the different sounds that come out of it. Oh, yeah, okay, yep. I guess, yeah, Jules has a few effects that he likes to, <laughs> to use on his guitar. So does Tom. He's got quite a few pedals, and he's always getting people coming up to him after our shows and saying how good a bass tone he's got and all that and trying to take photos of his pedal board, you know. <laughs> all right. Try and copy his sound, I guess. You're coming to the Brunswick Hotel yeah, so that'll be the Messiah tour, which is for the single we just released. And it's only a short run. I think we're just doing four dates. Gold Coast, I think we come down your way, and then we go to Sydney, then then back up Brisbane again. Yeah, you're doing the 23rd of November at the Brunswick Hotel in Sydney Road, Brunswick. That's it, yeah. And that's with Hotel on Mayfair, Tang and Sheriff. Yeah, yeah, we did a gig there. Oh, it must have been probably just over a year ago. And Sheriff played and they sort of blew us away. So we were keen to get back there and get them on board again. On the 30th of November, in Brisbane at the zoo, you've got the End Is Nigh split single launch. Yeah, yeah. It's basically a a triple header, which is us and a good friend of ours, Ariel's, and Forever the Optimist. Right. And you're all launching singles? Yeah, it's a triple single launch, all on the one night. And I think what happened was that Jules booked a gig, like as our gig, and then when it came to filling up the lineup, the other two bands that he kind of found were doing singles as well. So we thought, you know, why not just make it one big party and have all, all three of us, triple headliner sort of thing. That's your last show for the year, isn't it? Yeah, that is, yeah. So hopefully we're going to have a big one. <laughs> and then you're going to spend summer recording the rest of the album. Yeah, that's the plan. We, uh, after our last gig, we'll probably, yeah, just head back to the studio over the summer and try and get it all down and hopefully it'll all be done for early to mid next year. And with the new album that you're working on, uh, you're recording that in your studio? No, no, we're not. We're doing it, well, we did the drums down at a studio called Arcadia Sound and Vision, which is in Mullumbimby near Byron Bay. And we're doing it with Steve James, who did the... Retribution EP. So basically, yeah, we're kind of going all out with that whole recording. So when you're actually recording, do you have to go and stay down there for a little while? Yeah, well, that, that studio is actually this guy. It's basically inside his house. Like he's got this huge house up on the hill, and he's just built this massive room, like right in the middle of it, which is a studio, and it's like you know a huge room, all it's like one of the best studios around this area. And, you know, he's got rooms there for, for the bands to stay in and everything. He cooks you dinner every night and he looks after you. So we had a good old time. How did you actually get on to Steve James? Because he wouldn't just work with everyone. No, well, a friend's band of ours recorded their album with him a couple of years ago. and we, We'd done a few gigs with them over the years and Julian really liked their album and just got, you know, got the details off him and got in touch with Steve and sent him some tracks and demos and he, he seemed to like it and yeah I guess from there he just got on board and we went straight in and started working with him. Have you actually played in any other bands before Green Thief? Yeah I've played in oh, only a couple really that have actually done you know, proper gigs. I, you know I've, I've played in like a, with mates and that you know growing up through high school and jammed with you know lots of different people but I've only really played in like two bands before Green Thief, I suppose, yeah. The same type of music or different? The first band was kind of similar, but we weren't together all that long, which was a shame because we're actually, like, I thought the music was quite good. So it was a bit of a shame at the time when we broke up because we were all really young and really into it. But the second band was totally opposite, really. It was just like Aussie pub rock, like ACDC kind of rip-off. It was cool, it was good fun at the time, but it's, like I said, totally different to what I'm playing in now, which is a lot more interesting, I suppose. Yeah, because, like, Green Thief actually is quite a bit different to most bands there. Yeah, I guess so. Like, there's a lot of people always sort of say, we our, our songs have a lot of changes in them, and they say, oh, Steve, you keep changing the beat and all this, you know, which is, I guess, their way of saying that, you know, we've got some complex songwriting or whatever, I don't know. But it keeps it keeps you on your toes. It keeps it interesting, I suppose. And people can find Green Thief at greenthief.com. 
Yeah, yep. This is greenthief.com and it's basically links to every every other page that bands have these days, like, you know, Facebook yeah. and, and that. Well, you've got the Mr. Number One video still up there. You're going to have to change it for Messiah. We haven't actually got an official clip for Messiah as yet, but... But people yeah. can find Messiah to listen to on YouTube or on Triple J Unearthed. Yeah, that's right. Yep. I think you can download it on, on Triple J Unearthed. You can. And and leave a nice review. <laughs> <laughs> what would you most like people to know about Green Thief? Uh, about Green Thief, I suppose, our live show. We pride ourselves on our live shows, and I think that's what sort of stands us above a lot of bands these days. You know, the, the old saying is, I suppose, you won't. You won't know unless you come check us out. But, yeah, I guess not only that, but I think our music's always evolving and it's unique. Uh, We do have our influences, but I guess we're forging our own sound. So that's probably what, yeah, I'd say I'd like people to know about Green Thief. I look forward to seeing you when you come back to Melbourne. Yeah, we can't wait to get back down there one last time for the year. It's been nice talking to you. Yeah, and you. Thanks for that, Kate. Thanks. Bye. See ya.